Hello everybody and welcome back to the Gaming Muscle YouTube channel where we're jumping into R Factor 2 to talk about the SW20 and its force feedback within R Factor 2. Now we are using the uh, Megan Trophy car here for this video because it is one of my favourite vehicles in this simulator and my, uh, my sort of history goes back with this car in uh, R Factor 1 is one of the cars that I've really first started getting driving online with you remember back in the day on our factor central servers and uh, well there's still a car there our factor central servers and uh, the fabled bros mcgann trophy servers we used to put so many hours into that but uh, of course it was with the uh, momo black steering wheel it was before we even had a logitech g25 so i go back with this car it's uh, it's a bit of a, a granddad vehicle now but it's always uh, you know it's, it's just a ridiculous vehicle it's uh, really a Megane. I think it's a, it's one of those jobbies where they put the shell of a car over the top of a race car. You've got a ridiculous uh, rear wing that's essentially a, uh, a passenger jet turned upside down, put on the back of the car. So it keeps itself glued to the road and then you've got a ridiculously powerful engine. So it's just super fun to drive as it's super tight, super grippy, super fast and uh, super glued to the road surface at all times. Now, uh, Onto the force feedback, which is what we're here to talk about. Uh, with R Factor 2, the most noticeable aspect with the uh, SW20 is uh, just. Let's try and get up the inside of it. Just that. Whoa, three point turn by that guy. Just how snappy and direct the force feedback feels from R Factor 2. And of all the simulators, I think R Factor 2 gets that direct. Um, almost violent aspect of force feedback probably the most correct now uh, for example in, in contrast to Assetto Corsa what happens with AC is that you though you get I think you get a better feel for the general sort of g-force mass and oh whoa overall direction that the car is going in uh, an SS Corsa what car wants to go in terms of its its mass and weight what AC does tend to lack is that uh, really sharp aggressive punch and some aspects of picking up details of the road surface. So, and I know some people, their complaint of uh, AC, especially if they tend to play a lot of R Factor 2, is that it feels a bit honey-like. It feels a bit, um, a bit uh, gloopy in its force feedback, if that makes sense. Now, personally, I relate that gloopiness to, as I say, the sort of G-force feel in the mass of the car, so it doesn't bother me. But you definitely do notice in R Factor 2 just how direct and uh, violent the uh, the response of the of the car is through the steering wheel, which is really quite nice. It certainly uh, certainly gets your blood pumping at times, and uh, you know it's nice having the risk of broken uh, broken wrists to uh, keep you focused on making sure that you don't drive off the circuit. Now, as I say. It seems that R Factor 2 really does emphasise the, the actual road surface and the, what the what the tyres are doing in terms of how they're moving over the road surface and bumping over the road surface and what the suspension is doing over the road surface. And through the direct drive wheel, it really is you know, totally crisp. As you go over small little details and bumps on the road surface, there you feel absolutely everything. You, you can almost drive with your eyes closed and you... Well, you could drive with your eyes closed and you go over a certain bump and you go, OK, that's that's this bump on this circuit to, on, on the final corner. Or that's that bit of tarmac that's uh, just been patched up. You can feel that through the wheel. Um, it is a shame that in the consumer version of R Factor 2, uh, we don't really have... I think there's one laser scan track. There's a couple of laser scan tracks, mod tracks, banging about there online. But it's a shame that there aren't really any official laser scan tracks that I know of for R Factor 2 because I think you really would you would get a fantastic feel for the road surface and on all those laser scan details through the force feedback especially with direct drive wheels whoa now you'll also notice there coming out some of these corners when we were oh look at that lift off oversteer absolutely fantastic this car is so nimble it's, it really encourages you to be subtle with it uh, despite it, as I say, being really super glued to the track, it still has that subtle characteristics with it. That's why I really like this vehicle. 
But uh, I've totally lost my train of thought there by, by having a uh, lift-off oversteer excitement. <laughs> yes, there we go. It's come back to my decrepit brain. What uh, is really emphasised as well is the, the uh, self-aligning and how immediately the cars create themselves in our factor 2, especially with this SW20. Now, what I found with consumer wheels, such as the uh, G25 we used to use, uh, the T300, and the TSPC Racer to some extent, our factor 2 is needlessly difficult to drive with those wheels because they don't have the speed to uh, self-align and correct the cars for you. you you sort of have to do it manually whereas when you uh, play it with a direct drive wheel anytime the back end really comes loose and you have a bit of a moment through your terrible driving you basically just let the car correct itself you, you <laughs> it's actually faster i mean the car will fix itself pretty much before you can really respond to it so you can focus on the actual basic driving rather than trying to have to a practice the car and learn learn it in a sort of how do you catch this type of slide for all the different types of slides for the different corners per track you can ignore all that because with the direct drive wheel you know if the car gets loose it's just going to correct itself so you just have to work on what you do once the car has then got back in line or how can you you know do you need to put the brake on a bit to bring it back or can you get on the throttle sooner or later or can you can you play with that slide more whoa let's go off road and test the uh, suspension so and actually it doesn't just apply to r factor 2 and this is one of the things with the direct drive wheel with sw20 to say it's using the small mage motor and i assume it's the same with any wheel that has the potential to have a really fast rotation is uh, with all the simulators it just makes them a lot easier to drive especially when it comes to catching the car won't make you probably won't make you faster though in general but it you know it does make that basic element of catching the vehicle less tricky and uh, more intuitive because it's effectively done for you now let's push up behind these guys we're going backwards down the grid with R Factor 2, the AI are excruciatingly slow at first, but then after about two laps or so, they uh, they start to uh, drink the Red Bull. You know, they've got it in the straws, suck on the Red Bull, and, and off they go. Now, another thing with R Factor 2, actually, that's particularly noticeable um, over the other driving simulators is how clear the uh, sort of flat spots and tyre wear comes through the force feedback. I can't think of any other simulator where you can really, really, very clearly through the force feedback feel how much general tyre wear you've got going on. So, generally speaking, with the other sims and uh, along with the direct drive wheel, when it comes to stuff like tyre wear, flat spots, you, you do, um, in AC again, for example, you do get a, uh, a sort of vibration for the flat spot, but it feels as if there's it's not as nuanced as the... Uh, Tire degradation is in in R Factor 2, and uh, I think with other simulators, when it comes to the general, just the, the tires going off either due to pressure or general wear, with those it's it's more a case of, whoa, dear God, <laughs> let's let go of the wheel there. Car just uh, fixed it for us. It's more of a case in those sims of um, you notice visually that you've just got less grip, or you can sort of tell on the brakes that the car's not slowing down as fast, or the cars visually not sticking as much or not turning in as well i think you you've got a far better feel through the force feedback for that aspect of general how how much grip you've got how much wear you've got on the tires in r factor 2 try and be a bit smoother there's a little bit of a jam let's try and get some speed on the car tried to almost run that corner the car sort of getting into oversteer almost tripping over itself and I just pull it out quickly whilst on the throttle absolutely fantastic oh. go on and you also notice in our factor 2 a really nice feature of it is that it does have a, uh, a like a real road a dynamic road which is uh, again on the consumer wheels I actually think the dynamic road is more of a hindrance to the simulator because you can't feel that grip at a basic level with uh, you, maybe with a TSPC racer and again I haven't used a Club Sport V2 but you might be able to feel it with that 
but anything lower than those wheels, you really can't feel it through the force feedback. So it actually just makes it needlessly hard. But because you've got the automatic correcting with the direct drive wheels and uh, some of the faster wheels, it's actually quite nice having, having the dynamic road. And when you drive off the line or off the grip and it's a little bit more slippy, it's not necessarily as much of a problem or as difficult as it is with the consumer wheels. Okay, so we go from the passenger jet attached to the back of a uh, silhouetted uh, fake road car that's actually a race car to an actual road car in the, in the form and shape of the Honda NSX. And uh, we've, we're taking it to the rather nice, uh, nicely modded Alton Park track. This track mod, I have to say, is actually a really, really fantastic uh, track. Really nice detail, really nice road surface. But... Why? Why would we go to a a floppy elephant on a skateboard road car in the form of the Honda NSX? Well, it actually helps you really demonstrate the uh, <laughs> the AI a bit slow on the first lap. Really helps demonstrate the contrast from a race car with the direct drive wheel, where it's basically trying to wrench your hands off, and you've got all the undulations, essentially just removing your thumbs each time you go over a bump to uh, to a road car where everything is rather ill-defined, gloopy, uh, rather sluggish, and uh, a little bit sorry for itself. But thanks to the power <laughs> of the SW20 and direct drive wheels, none of that really matters. Uh, when you, you know when you drive these type of cars with the consumer wheels, T300, TSPC race, anything with a belt in it. What tends to happen is the more sluggish cars in games um, are so, so you, you've got the sluggish nature of the car combined with the sluggish sloppy nature of the steering wheel. So you have the, the game sort of adding to, <laughs> to the dampening that's inherent to those devices. The nice thing with the direct drive wheel is that you know the wheel's so tight inherently that when you put a sluggish car on it, you, all you're feeling is the sluggish car and not the sluggish nature of the wheel. I think what tends to happen with the consumer wheels as well is that really, you, you, you're trying your best to try and get the most out of them at all times, so you're never really getting the actual defined characteristic of, of a vehicle as per what the simulator's putting out. You, you're really just trying to get as fast a rotation of the wheel as possible and as much information from the car as possible to then aid you in driving. The really nice thing with the direct drive wheel is that it, it has all that by default. By, by, by default, it, it puts out absolutely spot on uh, force feedback. If not, it's, it's over the top. So with the direct drive wheel, it's a case of normally adding dampening and uh, ringing it in a bit. <laughs> so when you get in these cars, it's just superb. I mean, this this feels pretty much in terms of the actual steering feel and how how the uh, forces are coming through the wheel, pretty much exactly as I would imagine this car in reality to uh, to actually feel. Now, I don't have a, a Honda NSX, nor have I driven one. But, you know, of course, I've driven pretty crappy road cars, and this has that kind of similar sluggish feel. It feels almost as if it's got some sort of power steering to its input. But you've got that really loose sort of uh, suspension travel and really... Um, delayed mass transfer of the vehicle as, as the car moves around through the corners and you can really feel all that going on through the steering wheel. If anything, I think R Factor 2 actually tends to do a better job with uh, with these sort of cars that have a lot more slip uh, than tighter cars in some ways in terms of conveying what's going on with the vehicle. I don't know if that's, that could just be a coincidence of uh, the, the suspension travel allowing for you to have more force feedback effects which then communicates more of what the vehicle's doing to the driver. But for example, in R-Factor 2 you notice the Skip Barber, the uh, the 60s cars and this Honda NSX tend to be the more communicative in terms of the actual mass of the vehicle compared to uh, most of the race cars that are available in the simulator. Now, what is really nice when driving this car with a direct drive wheel is you particularly notice one of what I think it's probably likely the defining characters of this vehicle in reality and that is the nature of how the car is really eager to turn into corners 
Oh, I totally, totally butchered that. <laughs> I, that's always going to happen, isn't it? As soon as you say something that a car does, a fundamental aspect of a car, you could do, demonstrate the complete opposite. Let's, let's reboot the car. Windows 95 restarting. Duh, 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 duh. So we'll get back on the track and uh, pretend we didn't spin off the circuit there. So yeah, the defining part of this car is how it leads into corners from the steering input and how it loads up on the front as you turn into a corner, especially when you come off the gas, you've got a bit of lift off oversteer and the weight of the car goes forwards on the brakes and then you can just turn in the car. You, you get this really satisfying way of being able to very precisely navigate the lumbering beast <laughs> through the corners and I could really see how this vehicle despite slower vehicles not normally being my sort of you know they don't normally tickle my pickle I could see how in reality you could you know you could just have this car you could take it to a circuit you could, you could just drive it until you died of old age just optimizing those corner entries flowing the car through them and really just feeling how the car moves around the track uh, it's just it's just really addictive if you're if you've got a couple of screws loose like myself and, and you know you're really into the sort of dynamics and movements of vehicles this this will uh, this will really get you off <laughs> for some reason the stuff in the skybox on this track is a little bit broken and we've got what looks like a remote control helicopter flying around and some pigeons breaking mac 4 <laughs> in formation uh flying around the circuit i don't know what's going on there some some weird skybox issues probably a a problem with VR. The hot air balloon though seems perfectly happy just sitting there in the sky. That's probably a static object. But let's try and drive a bit smoother here. And you can... I mean, look at the car in front, how, how it's shuffling around the circuit. And that's the kind of movements that you can really feel through the force feedback. And what in some ways feels a bit like um, the tyre flex of the vehicle. You, you especially notice actually when you're taking this car up, up a hill that's got a turn on it. So a good example is that uphill corner on Lime Rock Park. You really feel the car load up on the front and it feels like the tyre wall almost bending and <laughs> dying under the agony of having to support and grip the vehicle through the corner. But it's a really satisfying feel and then you can feel that also riding over the bumps through the force feedback. Uh, it's absolutely superb. Just really nice road details coming through. Let's try and do this without ending up with a, a bumper in his bumper <laughs> right next to him fantastic in vr because i mean you just really appreciate the rear end of his car I'm looking at his ass like a bit of car ass i mean are cars male or female who cares it looks nice don't think they're road legal though because everyone's got the same number plate <laughs> you could put that number plate on your car and go through some speed cameras just to troll the uh the police a bit. Oh, AI is a bit, a bit drunk. So let's. Uh, I'm going to finish this lap. Let's. We're, we're going to do some ridiculously loose driving, and we'll see how much we can throw this vehicle around the corners and still maintain some degree of control. But before we do that, actually, let's uh, let's talk about an important feature of older vehicles. Not only do they have tape players, which is, you know, that's really important. A car's not a car without a tape player. But uh, if you look at the dash in this vehicle, right, and, and the actual cockpit interior, how it's finished off with nice bits of fabric, subtle curves, and your nice little beveled uh, window screen panel for, there for the windows, controlling them and uh, for controlling the, uh, the angle of the mirrors and everything. This is all really nicely finished, really clear. Nice and smooth. They've even got a little bit of leather on the uh, door there. Absolutely gorgeous vehicle. Nice little bit of trim on the edge of the seat as well. Fantastic. Now, go and load up any picture of a modern... sort of... Uh, any modern road car or supercar or road car that's sort of that borderline between, you know, trying to be a supercar but isn't. And uh, just look how horrendous and how hideous the cockpits are. I don't know what is going on with car manufacturers, but for some reason they're trying to make all their cars look like really bad PC case mods. It's just, I don't know what's happened. Maybe it's because they're using CAD more, so they feel like, okay, we can put more curves on things. 
but I, I just don't understand it. Do not understand it at all. Rant, uh, rant completed. <laughs> I was, I the reason I bring that up though is because I was looking at the 2015 Honda NSX and it looks so disgusting, so vile, and they completely negated the, the design history of the vehicle. It just looks horrible. And whereas with the, this NSX, you can see it sort of where, where it fits in with other supercars and how, how it sort of, it's not over engineered. It doesn't look like someone's driven through Stonehenge drifting into every single pillar and then beveled off all the edges. It just, it looks functional. It looks sexy. What is going on with car designs? Right, I've just triggered myself. We're off now. Trigger, trigger warning, trigger finished. We're done. We've got the complaints out of the way. This video is supposed to be about the force feedback, not car design. <laughs> Let's get drifting and we'll see what sort of ludicrous angles we can put in. But the crowd have got the tents out there. Why would you dab your brake there? I don't know. <laughs> this, guy, this is fantastic though. Super relaxing. If I uh, win the lottery, I'll be buying one of these. And we'll be going to Germany. <laughs> and we'll be never leaving. There'll just be a game of muscle lapping. The Whoa, God, put your brake on there. Lapping the ring constantly. Even whilst they're doing the 24 hours of <laughs> the ring. Nordschlaf 24 hour race. There'll just be a game of muscle in this Honda NSX. Driving around at 10 miles an hour. No, actually, in reality, we'd probably wall it on the first lap, so... <laughs> We'll be there fixing the uh, the Armco barrier. Right! Dear God, tangent alert. Let's do some sliding. Should rename this the Tangent Mobile. There you go, the Mac 4 pigeons. Should uh, tell the uh, American uh, Secret Service about those pigeons. <laughs> That's the secret to Britain's success, you know. Mac 4 pigeons. We don't need spy planes. We've got pigeons that can travel the speed of light which isn't Mac 4 but you know so I mean you could just literally you could just turn laps in this uh, really just so smooth and fun to drive let's chuck it in a bit go one way then go the other way you do get a degree of that oscillation with this car but again you know if you watch uh, clips on YouTube you see that where you go in and then you've not quite put enough power on the back end so the car sweeps itself back out. Look at that, you can really load the front of the vehicle just with the grip on the, from the steering column, from the movement you put on the steering. And through the force feedback, you can feel how much of that grip you've got so you don't overdo it. Absolutely awesome. There'll be a way to use that that is conducive to, you know, getting a good line through the corners and actually doing a faster lap. Unfortunately, um, you know, maybe that wasn't a second gear corner. Unfortunately, I'm, you know, I'm not the fastest of drivers. I'm one of those really boring sim racers that just likes the feel of driving. I need, uh, maybe I need to do like speed lessons in speed. I need to up the competitivity. Competitivity. We made a new word up there. But uh, absolutely awesome. VR again, as well as I say. I think is the icing on the cake. Oh, I haven't got quite enough. So it does tend to induce understeer a bit unless you really get on the uh, the gas around the corner to stop that front end beginning to understeer. But look at that, you can just throw it in sideways once you've already almost essentially passed. Okay, second gear. There goes the engine. <laughs> once you've basically got too deep into the corner, and then you can just slide the back end out and keep the car right on the inside of the corner at a really tight angle. If, if anyone wants to buy me one of these in real life, I'll be... Uh, I, I won't turn it down. There go the pigeons again! Now, I've just set this to a 11-lap race. I don't know how many laps we're on. I've not got any, any UI on the screen. I definitely find it nicer to... Uh, in VR, generally turn the UI off. <laughs> and just uh, enjoy what's going on. His, his wheels are unfortunately going through his bodywork there. 
might need to uh, raise his suspension a touch. Oh, see, that corner, <laughs> yank of the force feet back there. Oh, the rumble strips as well, actually. Oh, there you go, that's the finish of the race there. The, the rumble strips as well come, come through this really nicely. And because this car is softer, the rumble strips come through the force feedback a lot softer as well. And not as, uh, nowhere near as harsh as when you, when you find the race cars that have the concrete suspension. This is the, the outlap. The AI love to finish off the race. Get out of the way. <laughs> so I think we have to bung it in second gear to get the the power on for it to keep going. In third gear, once you get into the slide, the car seems to bog down. I mean, even in second gear, it struggles. So I'm not sure... My, my, oh, he wants to go in the pit. We don't. You're staying out. Oh, no. We've confused him now. Where's he going to go? We've destroyed the AI. <laughs> What's he going to do? He can't go in the pit. Oh, we're asking for trouble here. Now his car is driving over the top of us. Where's he going? <laughs> he needs to go in the pit. Must go in the pit. We've confused him. Poor, poor AI there. Oh, dear. I wonder what happens when he gets to his pit box. <laughs> oh, dear. He doesn't care about his paintwork. He's just right in that wall. Oh, there he goes. Fortunately, he's been Star Trek teleported away. Let's see if we can get the... Back to keep it spinning up. So it does... It bogs down on the power. So, I don't, you know, I don't think it's got that much torque in this vehicle to actually light up the rears. Maybe we need, like, a... A, a wet track or just something to make it a bit looser yeah maybe it's second gear seems to just about do it hammering it drop the clutch Whoa. but you know as you can see I mean I could just drive this all day long yeah don't buy a direct drive wheel You'll, you'll load up into your driving simulator for sort of... Oh, that was a... That was disgust. Close your eyes. That didn't happen. You'll buy a direct drive wheel and you'll load up your game for, you know, a race. Maybe maybe a race against AI. Maybe a quick session online. You know you're skidding when there's smoke coming through the, uh, through the footwell. And you'll just end up... You'll just end up driving and not stopping. And when you combine VR to it, it's very easy to, to not realise what the time is with VR because you obviously you can't see out the headset. There's that time up from before. <laughs> this engine's going to blow. There's been times when I've had the VR headset on and it's daytime and you take it off, it's night time. You're like, oh, what's going on? Or it's been night time. You started early in the morning. And uh, you take it off and it's brighter outside than in the VR headset. That's uh, a spectacle to behold. Drifting helicopter. Okay, this is this is the last lap, I promise. <laughs> but I hope... Uh, whoa, I hope that... <laughs> that you can drift on the grass. <laughs> Don't lop. I hope that gives you an overview idea of what the uh, force feedback's like in R-Factor 2 with the SW20. Probably didn't. Probably a terrible video. Hopefully you could see a little bit through the uh, thumbnail what the steering wheel is actually doing but uh, you know if you if you haven't tried a direct drive wheel try and get to try one I don't know there can't be that many in the UK as I said in the previous video we need a like a land center that has direct drive wheels where you could pay 10 pounds for half an hour or something and then uh, then you'll wish you hadn't because I tell you the first time I tried the direct drive wheel at a friend's house and after that I was like ah oh, the consumer wheels just they don't quite cut it i mean they're really good as gaming devices and i think they're fantastic value for money relative to what we started out on back in when it was black and white you know and we were playing games on the atari st you know consumer wheels are fantastic input devices they do let you do alien laps they do let you drive all the basics they let you practice h pattern shift and everything they are fantastic they give you information from the game really good but 
a direct drive wheel with say 15 newton meters of torque and 200 or so rpm potential rotation and absolute sim racing heaven combine that with vr and uh, that's it I, I might as well just die now because we've achieved we've ach achieved optimum sim racing uh trajectory we're, we're at the peak we're at the summit of sim racing <laughs> unfortunately the skills aren't so we've got something to work on before we can actually die happy so that's good let's not get hit by a car when we cross the road just yet but there you go guys i, I hope you enjoyed that i hope that was useful for those of you on the fence to spending all your money um, until the next one, don't forget to click the, uh, the subscribe button. Don't forget to like, drop us a comment. Goodbye.